ImageNet, Transfer Learning, and look at Object Detection, where we take a look at pre-trained ImageNet models. So firstly, let's take a look at some famous CNNs. Now, if you're a computer vision enthusiast, you've surely heard of some of these famous CNNs, things like Leonet, AlexNet, VGGNet, VGG16 and 19, ResNet 50, Inception, version 3, and Exception. And there are quite a few others like MobileNet as well. So what made these things so famous? Well, the performance on ImageNet is what made them famous. And ImageNet refers to a data set that is the ImageNet Large Scale Visual Recognition Challenge, which is a basically a computer vision contest or challenge that's composed of 1.2 million training images with a thousand object classes. And it's the official de facto benchmark to test how good your deep learning CNN actually is and where we've come. So you can see this is the progress on ImageNet over the time, over these last 20, maybe 20 years or so. Now, Linet never competed in, Vigit in ImageNet. Linet was actually on MNIST, okay? But you could look at AlexNet and look at ResNet. Look at the performance increase in the error rates here. Went down from 15.3 to 3.6. And look at the complexity as well. Complexity has kind of roughly stayed the same in terms of number of parameters, hasn't it? VGG has a ridiculous number of parameters, 138 million. But when architectures got maybe more intelligent with ResNet, it performance got better without actually making the parameters larger. So we can actually now load and experiment with these trained models in Keras. Now that's a huge advantage because some of these models would have taken weeks to train and that's not an exaggeration. I remember some of them were trained on a parallel array of GPUs for two weeks before reaching that level of performance. So you can do this. We can actually do this in Python right now. We're going to do it quite shortly now. But what I'm going to mention here is that if you wanted to go to Keras applications here, you can take a look at all the pre-trained models that are shipped with Keras. So now let's move on into our IPython notebook and get started with actually experimenting with ImageNet pre-trained models. So I want you guys to open notebook number 18, ImageNet dash VGG16, ResNet 50, and Inception V3. So let's load this notebook here. It's going to come up in a few seconds. And there we go. So now the first time you load some of these networks, you're actually going to have to wait for it to download the weights. Now I have downloaded my weights before, so this is not going to come up again on my system, but you're going to see this message here on your system if this is the first time you're importing and loading the weights from ResNet. So you can actually see this is how we import weights or networks or pre-trained models, I should say, from Keras's modules and libraries and functions. So you can actually just point it to here, dot applications dot resnet. We're going to import resnet 50 to use, so we can use it here like this. And we're going to just use some of the little applications and things here. So let's do this. And let's see what it says. Shouldn't take too long. Okay, so we've loaded it now. Now let's go on into our resnet model here. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to test resnet on some of our sample images here. Now this sample image is a dog. Let's see what it actually predicts. So I'm just going to go through the predicting process here. All right, sorry for moving up and down too much. Just going to load our image here using this function here. So we're going to got it from this image tool here. All right, so we're just going to load it here and we get the image in our right target size as well, specified here and actually have it twice here. That's why I was a little bit confused for a second. And then we just have run through the array, we just bring it into array, we expand the dimensions, we pre-process the image here. Another function in Keras, this gets it in a format automatically ready for prediction. So let's take a look at the prediction. All right, so these are the outputs right here below. We have a German Shepherd or Kelpie or Malinos. So I know you didn't see the image here. So actually what I'm going to do is that I have that same image in a folder here. And this folder has some images here we're going to test here on ImageNet. So this is just a way, a simple way just to load and to get an image and test it. So I'm going to actually bring up the image of the dog so you can guys see what it was before we actually move on to the next video here. So this was our sample image we looked here and it actually is a German Shepherd, but you know German Shepherds look quite similar to German Shepherds. So it actually as a third good guess, I'm not even sure what a Kelpie looks like, but it's probably something that looks similar to this as well. So you can see it worked pretty well. So now let's test this ResNet image classifier on a bunch of other images here that I've loaded. So you can see this is a mountain bike or a bicycle. It's actually a race of racing bike, but it actually gets it pretty well, pretty quick, good here. Not, definitely not a Dalmatian. I'm not sure why that's a third one, but it's, and it's a fairly high percentage. Could be a plow, I'm guessing, maybe a plow. This bend here or this bend here could have looked like a plow to our 
ResNet, but it's definitely a bicycle and it got it right. Let's see what the other image is here. This is our dog that we saw before. This is definitely a lion, 99.999%. Wow, it's pretty sure this is a lion. Not a collie, not a cheetah, okay? Very low percentages that it could be with those. But a collie is not a bad guess. Dog that kind of has big kind of mane around its head, I believe. And a cheetah, well, maybe because it's a cat-like animal. Let's see what else this is. Yes, definitely a ship liner. Not a dock. I'm not sure why. Maybe there was some ship in images of docks. There were ships in it, so that could have been confusing it. And it's not a container ship because there's no containers on this. It's like a cruise ship type of style here. So let's see what else. A tiger. Definitely a tiger. Tiger cat. Not entirely sure what the difference is. Maybe it's a type of cat that has stripes like a tiger. And a jaguar is a good close to guess. And this one is a yacht. And you can see it looks like a catamaran type yacht. Somewhat, I guess. Yeah. I'm not even sure what a trimaran is or a yawl, but it was low percentages in those, relatively low. So that's pretty cool. So now let's actually compare VGG16 with ResNet50. So now let's firstly load the weights for VGG16. This takes maybe about 5 to 10 seconds, depending on the speed of your system. And while this loads, in the meantime, what I'm going to do, because I didn't mention this before in the previous slide, is that once we have the loaded model and we predict the image that we pre-process in a small little pipeline right here, what we do, we take this object here, this VGG, this Preds VGG model object, that's our output predictions, and we run this into decode predictions to get the text out of it. We get a top tree, that's what top equal tree is. We just get the first value in this array here, and then we can just use this now, feed this output here into our draw test function that I created. Draw test takes two, it actually takes three inputs. This is the name of the window. This is the actual prediction outputs. And this is the image here. And let's go back up to draw test here. And it's a simple OpenCV function I, I built here that just puts a big border over the image and puts the text over the image here, along with the a number of predictions here. That's why we have this little loop here. So we, since we're taking the top three predictions, we just put the text over it, that image here, so we can display it. So now, Let's run and compare ResNet with VGG16. So it takes a little while to run and initialize, maybe about five seconds, and here we go. So it's the same image in case you guys think I'm cheating. And we can see, let's make this back to here. You can see how it compares. So you can see both identified as a mountain bike. VGG was a little bit more sure that it was a bike. Bicycle built for two, not entirely sure. Maybe it's like a double seating type bike. Either way, it's better than a plow. I'm not entirely sure what an Alp is, but you can see maybe VGG is slightly better in this case. What about this one here with the dog, German Shepherd? You can see, well, it actually, we can see, you need to actually adjust this module to get the full percentages out of it here. That's, we're going to need to change the border width here a bit, but that's okay for now. Or maybe reduce the size of the text, but they both got German Shepherd quite good. Now let's look at this one. You can actually see the full predictions here. They both say lion, which is exactly what we wanted to see. So that's ideal. And now this one says liner for boat, dock, container ship, almost exactly the same top tree. So that's quite cool. View that. This one is tiger. You can see tiger. It's VGG is actually a little less sure that it's a tiger, a little more sure it's a tiger cat. So it's probably not ideal. However, the top tree and boat are the same. And the last one is the yacht. And they both say catamaran. Resnet is a bit more sure. VGG is a little bit less sure. However, they both have the same two second top predictions. However, they're in a different order. So that is quite interesting. So now let's do a quick recap. What we've learned, we've learned what ImageNet is and why it's important. We've also learned about some famous CNNs and what made them famous, which was their performance on ImageNet, on the ImageNet data set. We've learned about how to load these pre-trained models, these complicated highly trained models in Keras so we can use them on our own data and images. And we've actually experimented and compared the performance of ResNet 50 and VGG 16. So now, in the next video, we're going to take a look at transfer learning, which is a very important skill in deep learning and convolutional neural networks. It's going to help you save a lot of time. Thank you.